I'm JD with the Nerdery. I'm here with Matt Hawkins. You've heard us talk about him almost every week. Uh, absolutely fantastic. First thing I gotta ask you is, as much writing as you do and running the company, how do you find all that energy? Uh, wow. No, it's uh, I break my day into two. I write in the morning and I, I run the company in the afternoon. So you know, I get up, exercise. To hit the uh, hit the computer, and then I go into the office, do meetings, and lunch, and uh, then I work with uh, the people in the business, and the legal, and uh, accounting, and all that. In the afternoon. So I just split my day right in half, and uh, out weekends I spend with my family. Very nice, very nice, and you have a very beautiful family. Thank you, and uh, congratulations on the recent nuptials. Thank you very much. And um, we have got a little bit of brand new news about uh, one of your titles, and something it might be having in the future. You want to talk about that? Which title? Oh, actually, I can't talk about. Can't it. talk yeah, about not, that. Not on, uh, not on camera. But there is, uh, there's some great media thing that will happen with Postal very soon. So if you don't have it, you need to get it. Yes. Um, what, what's, what's next? What's your next step? Can you talk about that? Um, uh, and symmetry. Next, new books. I'm working on the second volume of Symmetry. I'm working on the fourth volume of Think Tank. I'm working on the third volume of The Tithe, and I am working on two new series. One about uh, junk DNA, and uh, the other one, uh, which is a eugenics conspiracy thriller uh, about cancer research and uh, immunotherapy. Awesome, awesome. Do you have uh, names for those titles yet? Uh, the, uh, the cancer one is called uh, Control the Clock, and Colleen Doran, who drew Sandman with uh, Neil Gaiman, is the artist for that. Uh, I went after her specifically because I liked her dynamics, so I'm doing that with her. Um, and uh, the Junk DNA one is called The Untitled Junk DNA Project. <laughs> <laughs> I love the names. Do uh, you want the quick two cents on them? Sure, yeah. that'd be the, great. Uh, the Junk DNA one is basically about, I discovered uh, about six months ago that some scientists realized that you can, you can record information on DNA. So you can write like, uh, like a hard drive. So you can actually write. So I started immediately thinking about what does that mean for junk DNA? You know, we have 80, 75, 80 percent of our, our DNA is junk DNA. No one knows what it's for. What if millions of years ago, some other species, it's not God, some other species, recorded all this information on, on this DNA that's been carried down through millions of, of generations of humans and primates and, and mammals, and uh, that has carried on this thing. And so these scientists basically use a uh, quantum cryptography algorithm to decrypt what some of it is, and they start looking at junk DNA and realize there's millions of terabytes of information uh, and it's, uh, it's basically uh, you get a window into what God what the God's plan and uh, and so there are all these biosomatics of uh, all these crazy creatures and things and energies and, and what dark matter is all these things are in this uh, this information and people are like and the, and the guy who discovers it is so freaked out by it he doesn't know what to do about it so it becomes a sort of interesting conspiracy filler where one guy knows the truth what does he do with it but he knows that that truth will shatter everything. That's incredible. So that's uh, that's the junk DNA one. Um, Control the clock is about. Um, I discovered that uh, when I started doing research about cancer therapy and immunotherapy, which is basically new new therapies to cure cancer, um, I started talking to these cancer researchers and asked them, "Is it possible to reverse that?" And uh, they're like, "What do you mean?" I said, "Can you, if you can use that technology to cure cancer, can you use it to cause cancer?" And they're like. What the fuck is wrong with you? And, and uh, I'm like, no, I'm a writer. And they're like, oh, okay. And uh, and then they, I start, I started meeting with this guy, and I, I talked to him over a few months, and, he, and we discovered, I worked with him. There, there is a, there are several gene markers in your body that specifically protect your body from cancer. And part of the reason why people get cancer is those things start to not work as well. They start to not function. The telomere lengths shorten as you get older. Um, it's why older people get cancer more than younger people. Um, and uh, there's about 50% of the population that is predestined for cancer at some point in their first 60 years. Almost 100% of the population is predestined for cancer by age 100. So if you live to age 100, you will have cancer of some sort because it's just a genetic you know, mutation. Um, and like I think I think the stats now are 80% and like. 100% of men over 80 have prostate cancer of some kind. Wow. So if you're a man, you live over 80, you will have prostate cancer at some point. But uh, the idea being is there's a eugenics conspiracy driller where they figure out a way, these people figure out a way to turn that on to sort of reduce the population in an equitable manner. Because these are the people that are uh, lesser, right? They're more, uh, you know, whatever, however you want to say it, you want to think of a, of the Machiavellian bad guy. And uh, they do it through the exportation of uh, wheat and corn to the world. Oh, wow. So, and that's uh, that'll be out sometime in this first and second quarter of 2017. All right. Next thing I want to ask you about is uh, Eden's Fall. Yes, sir. Uh, Eden's Fall comes out in August, September, October. It's a three-issue storyline that uh, combines Think Tank, Postal, and the Tithe. Um, it's already been set up in, in uh, the Tithe Volume Two and Postal Volume Three. And uh, 
the idea is it's an organic crossover of those three titles that connect together. And actually, we're introducing a completely new character that will spin off into a new series sometime in late 2017. Very and nice. uh, Brian Hill and I, who co-wrote Postal, are doing that together. Uh, it's being illustrated by Atilio Rojo, who did the second volume of Night Generation. Uh, awesome. And awesome. the second volume of The Tide. Oh, no. No, he didn't. That was uh, Phil Seedy. I'm sorry. He did the second volume of, of Night Generation. He did something else for us, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, my bad. Sorry, Atilio. Uh, anyway. Um, next thing I want to ask you is, you are a physicist. Yeah. How much of you is in Think Tank? <laughs> That's, uh, that's an interesting metaphysical question. Um, I'd say Think Tank is, uh, to me the art is always more important than the story. I, I think I, I, uh, it's a visual medium, comic books is about art, and uh, so I'm gonna say that it's 60% Rasonic at all and 40% me. And uh, there's a lot of me in that character. It's, it's uh, yeah. I mean, the people that know me personally have known me for a long time, so that whenever they read that book, they hear my voice coming out of that character's mouth, you know, so um, I, that's the most personal story I've ever read. Uh, I know when I read it, oh, I, yeah, you I, hear, I hear your voice, voice. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, that's, you, you said before uh, in our interview last year uh, that you write what you want to learn about. Right. So I'm going to ask you the most blunt, most obvious question I can think of. What do you want to learn about right now? Epigenetics. You know what that is? No. Uh, epigenetics is the study of changing DNA while you're still alive. Um, there, you know, the idea of mutation and uh, uh, evolution with uh, like natural selection and, and generational change in DNA and DNA structure. There is an entire new science of changing DNA uh, in an existing creature, and it's called epigenetics. And it's a huge thing that no one knows about. And uh, they have done it already in uh, animals. Uh, where they've taken like uh, fish and they've spliced fish with uh, fish and cats Rabbi and other things with jellyfish DNA. Rabbi and they, what happens when you do that is they glow in the dark. Oh, wow. So you have cats and dogs. There's even a human that did it to himself that uh, has glow in the dark skin. Oh. And so jellyfish DNA will, will give you that. And the reason is because, you know, it's kind of like the lizard from Spider-Man. The idea, if you could splice DNA in an existing person, like let's say my arm got lopped off, if I could figure a way to, you know, use epigenetics to give me some lizard DNA, maybe I could grow my arm back. Or maybe you could grow the lizard. <laughs> so, you never know. But uh, epigenetics right? freaks me out, and uh, I'm really obsessed with immunotherapy and cancer because I, you know, I knew Mike Turner real well, and he passed away of cancer at a very young age. And uh, my mom has had cancer four times, and uh, I just know a lot of people have been affected by cancer, and it affects everyone really. And some everyone knows someone that's died or had cancer, so um, it really is the plague of the 20th century. And so I uh, that and war. Um, but uh, so I. I I think we'll see a cure for cancer, at least in my life. Okay, um, I got two more questions for you. All right, you, in the back of most of your books, you have a section citing all your references. What inspired you to do that? Alan Moore, uh, Beef of, or Beef of Vendetta. Or not Beef of Vendetta, uh, From Hell. Yeah, the, uh, I read From Hell in the early 90s that Alan Moore wrote, and uh, I didn't really know anything about Jack the Ripper. And, uh, that inspired me absolutely 100% It's the only reason I do it because when I read From Hell, I read the comic, I said, wow, this is really great. The movie's okay, but the book was amazing. And not only did I read the book, it had all these footnotes of all these books he read. I tracked down every single one of those books and read them. I also went to White Chapel and did the White Chapel tour. And uh, I actually worked with Alan on Judgment Day that he wrote. I was his editor. And uh, so I, I got to talk to him extensively about all that stuff, which was pretty cool. You know, so um, I actually... Interesting tidbit, I was the editor of an Alan Moore story that was Gil Kane's final art that he did before he passed away. Gil Kane's a very famous old Marvel artist that did uh, a lot of the Marvel Cowboys and stuff like that, but I was one of his final editors, which is kind of a cool claim to fame. Co-creator of Daredevil. Oh, is he? I don't know. Maybe. Blue Bells. Blue Bells. Is that Gil Kane? I don't even know. We'll fact check and we'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, and last question we ask everybody. What's your definition of a nerd? Um, I don't know. Uh, someone who likes cool shit. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty simple. And, of course, we have a tagline for you. Because we review everything that you've been putting out. Right on. And uh, I, was wanting, I was wanting to know if you'd say it wouldn't. Uh, okay, what is it? It's uh, If you're not reading Matt Hawkins. You suck. All right, well, you get one, two, three? Well, one, two, three. If you're not, not reading, reading Matt Hawkins, you, you suck. suck. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks man. so much. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah.